1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 58. We're going to talk about this morning the steadfast, unmovable type. And the message this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, again for your word. We ask, Lord, that you will work your will and way and be with the message this morning. Take the preacher, hide him behind the cross. Give him the words to say that will cause us, Lord, to stand fast in the day in which we live. To stand on the word of God. Stand for the word of God. And to stand with Christ. Father, we just pray that you will work your will and way. Our Father, we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Now it takes all types to make up a world. Make up a church. Make up a company. Most successful companies have many different types of people in them. Each with different abilities, each with different talents to move the company forward. A church is the same way. All of us here are all different. Right? We're all different. Different ages, different genders, different experience. Look at life in different ways. And it takes all types of people to be able to move things forward. In the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's the strong, silent types. The shy, quiet types. Those are the ones I would look out for. The shy, quiet types. The outgoing types. The generous type. Many different types. There is, however, a missing type today, I think, a type that every believer in the Lord Jesus Christ should become in their life. And that's the steadfast, unmovable type of person. Here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the Apostle Paul speaks to the church at Corinth about the doctrine of the resurrection of Christ and the resurrection of of the body. Paul speaks on Paul speaks of the basis of the gospel is found in the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The death and the burial are worthless to the salvation of our soul without the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. For without the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus is just like any other religious leader in the world. Just like Buddha, just like Confucius, just like Muhammad. That if you go to their graves, you'll find bones. If you go to the grave of the Lord Jesus Christ, there's nothing there. Because Christ has risen from the dead. The basis of our salvation. He gives the argument of the fact of the resurrection. And if Christ is not raised, then we're not saved. If Christ is not raised, we are dead in our sins. But Paul confirms that Christ is risen from the dead. The tomb is empty on the third day. The tomb is empty today. He talks about the resurrection of the body as well, and the body of the just and the unjust. Yes, sinners will have a day of resurrection. Let's talk about Revelation chapter 20. The day will be raised to be judged, sentenced for rejecting Christ and the gospel and their sin. And then he talks about the mystery that will happen when the Lord Jesus Christ comes from here for his own in the last part of chapter 15, beginning in about verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. 
This mortal body will put on immortality. This corruptible body will put on incorruption. We will be changed. In a moment. The twinkling of an eye at the last trump. When Christ comes to take his bride out of this world. And to go home to be with him. Through Jesus Christ, verse 57 says, we have the victory. Thanks be unto God that giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are victorious today. You are victorious today. If you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Victory over sin, death, hell, the grave. Victory over fear. Every victory in our life comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, because, so too, because of all of this that I have mentioned, Paul says, therefore, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Because the resurrection is real, because your resurrection is coming, be steadfast, and unmovable. There are three things that describe this type of person, the steadfast, unmovable type. And the first is, is that the steadfast, unmovable type stands in the Lord Jesus Christ. The word there, steadfast, it means, basically, to sit sedentary, to be immovable, not capable of being moved. It's like some people in a church. You know, you know these type of people. They've gone to that church for 40, 50 years. They paid their tithes for 40, 50 years, and they sit in the exact same seat every Sunday for 40 and 50 years. And if anyone sits in their seat, they say, excuse me. That's my seat. You know the type. All we, 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 we see, there's a comfortableness there. They know that seat will hold them every time they sit in it. You probably have a chair like that in your house, right? A chair you trust. I have a chair that I trust, holds my 210 pound frame. And it won't break. That's the chair I sit in. That's the chair I trust. The Savior I trust, the hope that I trust in, and the day and age in which we live in is the Lord Jesus Christ. Because I can trust Him. He's like that old friend who never leaves. He's always there. And believers in Christ should be immovable in the faith of the Lord and His Word. <coughs> and that includes the doctrine of the resurrection. There are many doctrines and teachings of the Word of God that many churches and many believers are straying away from and claiming they do not believe. There are those who profess to know the Lord Jesus Christ, for example, that do not believe in a literal hell. There are some who believe we're already living in hell. <laughs> They'll be surprised. There are those who don't really believe in the virgin birth. There are those who don't really believe that God's word is truly the word of God. So where's their hope? And where's their faith? We need, we, need, we need to be able to stand immovable in faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and in his word, including this doctrine of the resurrection. 
Jesus said to his disciples in John chapter 14 and verse 19, he said, a yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. My friends, it's a guarantee. Christ lives today. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. Sitting at the right hand of the throne of the Father in heaven. And because he lives, you will live as well. And you will live in the glories of heaven if you know Christ as your Savior. If you don't believe in the resurrection and the life after this one, then this would lead you to immoral and lawless behavior, which we see around us. The attitude of eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. And after the grave, there is nothing. Won't those people be surprised? Because after the grave, there is something. For our soul is eternal. It lives forever. And it will spend eternity in one of two places. The penitentiary of the damned at the madhouse of the universe, that place we call hell, or with the Father. In the place that he has gone to prepare for us, the Lord has gone to prepare for us, that place called heaven. And the place that decision is made is today, now, here. Because you can't make it after death. And no one can make it for you, before or after death. Only you can make that decision for yourself. Will you trust in the Lord or will you not? Will you live for the Lord if you profess to know Christ or will you not? That decision is yours. And our life is usually based on the choices that we make, good or bad. Jesus is risen from the dead, so stand steadfastly in this truth. The word unmovable means not to be moved away. Again, it has that meaning of being immovable. And the world's trying to move you away from your faith. The world is trying to scare you from your faith. Believers are not to let the trials and tribulations of, uh, that come into their lives move us away from our anchor, the Lord Jesus Christ. We are not to be moved away from the word of God and from the gospel. The Bible tells us in Colossians chapter number 1, Colossians chapter number 1, and verse number Colossians 1 and verse 23. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. We are to continue in the faith, rooted and grounded and not moved. Jesus is my Savior. I shall not be moved. I'm going to stand in the liberty wherewith Christ has made me free. I'm going to stand in the evil day in which we live. I'm going to do my best, filled with the Holy Spirit of God, to stand and not be moved. That's what it means to be steadfast and unmovable.
And sometimes that's hard to do. Life happens. You know life. It probably happened to you this morning. Things happen that will challenge us. And all that is going on in the world today, Satan is trying to scare us away from our faith. Trying to use fear to throw up our hands and say, oh no, what are we going to do? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to stand on the promises of the word of God. I'm going to stay by the stuff. I'm going to walk with the Lord to the best of my ability, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit of God. And if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you should do the same. Nothing that's happening around you should scare you. You shouldn't be afraid of what's going on. Because what go, what's going on should be the encouragement to us as believers in Christ that because the Christ was raised again from the grave, he's coming for us. And man, it's going to be soon. It is right around the corner. Are you ready? Are you watching? Are you expecting? Are you like the world and going on the way the world has gone on for thousands of years? The mockers and the scoffers who say, where's the promise of his coming? The world is going to hell in a handbasket. Yes, that's true. It's well on its way. But I'm going home to be with the Lord when he comes. I'm hoping to see all of you there with me. Being steadfast and unmovable. Not letting our circumstances, not letting the consequences of our faith, not letting anything, anything move us from where we stand in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's needed today more than ever. If you have Jesus Christ in your heart, in your life, you do have nothing to fear. Because of the resurrection of Christ, we will all be raised unto righteousness one day and enjoy the glories of heaven. According to Philippians chapter 1 and verse 21. Keep close to your anchor. The anchor that is talked about in Hebrews chapter 6 and verse number 19. That anchor is your hope. The only hope we have in this world is the Lord Jesus Christ. And the only hope this world has is the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we don't tell them about the gospel, and if we don't tell them that they need to know Christ, if we don't tell them judgment is coming, and you better get ready for it by trusting Christ as your Savior, who's going to? Being, steadfast and, being the steadfast and unmovable type, he stands in Christ and for Christ. He is like the concluding parable in the Sermon on the Mount, in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7, and verse 24. It's a familiar story to many, probably many of you this morning. Two men set about to build a house. And Jesus says there in verse 24, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded 
upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house. And it fell and great was the fall of it. What are you building your life on? Is it on the foundation of the rock? The Lord Jesus Christ? Or is it upon the earth? The sand? Sand shifts. Any of you that have an uneven floor in your house, you understand that. I think the parsonage has shifted in the four years that we've lived there. You know, you see a certain slope. <coughs> are, you building, are, you building, are you building your life upon the rock? Are you in Christ? Not only knowing him as your savior, but are you living for him? He that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I shall liken him unto a wise man. He that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, I will liken him unto a foolish man. There are foolish Christians out there today. Because all they believe in Christ for is for the salvation of their soul. I've got my get out of hell free card. But I'm still going to live my life the way I want. Nobody's going to tell me how to live my life. Not even God. Friend, if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, that's not the way to live your life. To be steadfast and unmovable is to be in Christ. Also, to be steadfast and unmovable, the steadfast and unmovable type is successful in the Lord's work. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. That word abounding, it means super abounding. Picture in your mind, if you will, the biggest container that you can think of. A 10, 12 story coffee cup, if coffee is your thing. The biggest container you can think of, filled to overflowing. Not filled to the brim. Filled to overflowing. That's being super abundant. That's being abundant in the work of the Lord. Overflowing in the work of the Lord. The, believers, the believer is successful because of their obedience to the word of God. He that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. If we're obedient to the word of God, we're going to be successful in what we do for the Lord. And if we don't, we won't. The believer who is successful and obedient to the word of God, he reads the word of God, he studies the word of God, he lives the word of God, and, lead, and this leads them to Christian maturity. But he also shares the word of God with others to help others become saved and mature in their faith. And the hope of Christian maturity is realized in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. We won't have Christian maturity in this life. There won't be perfection in this life. There can't be. Because there's a whole body that we live in, first of all. See, there are enemies from without, the world and the flesh, but there's the enemy within. Or the world and the devil, but there's the enemy within, the flesh. 
The flesh that leads us to do those things that we don't want to do. Paul talks about that in Romans chapter 7, the last half of the chapter. But because of the resurrection, one day we will be with the Lord. We will become perfect and mature. But we are to work toward that in this life. We are to be conformed to the image of God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, it says in Romans chapter 8. The motivation for living for Christ and growing in faith is the resurrection of Christ and our future resurrection to be with the Lord. With the hope that the believer has in the resurrection, we cannot have too much diligence or zeal for the Lord Jesus Christ. Because there are those who are telling us, who restrict us, from sharing our faith, for sharing Christ with others. My wife worked for a company, a corporation, where it was against their rules to be able to tell someone about Christ or even mention the name. You could get fired. So my wife, being the strong, silent type that she is, found ways to witness anyway. The world doesn't want to hear about Christ. It doesn't want to hear about our faith. They don't care. Does that mean that we just be quiet and go sit in a corner? No. Stand. Steadfast, unmovable, always abounding. Go tell others about Christ. Speak up. Yes, it may cost you to do it. Yes. But you'll be blessed for it. No matter what it costs. Believers shouldn't stunt their growth and their holiness and faith and, and life abounding in the Lord's work. Make sure the Lord is dictating to you how to live your life, what you should do for Him. Not the world, not the politician, not Hollywood. Thus saith the Lord. Let that be your credo. Let that dictate your life and what you do. And as believers in Christ, we need to have that. And we need to be willing to pay the consequences. Because there will be consequences. For standing and being steadfast and unmovable. And always abounding in the work of the Lord. There will be circumstance consequences. We have to be willing to pay them. The steadfast, unmovable type doesn't squander their labor in the Lord. The work for the Lord Jesus Christ they do isn't in vain. It isn't empty. It has substance. You are doing something. It's what I tell myself many weeks as I stand here behind this pulpit preaching the word of God and not seeing a visible result. Part of 
promise of God is my word shall not return unto me void, shall accomplish that which I set it to. And that's what I hang my hat on. Because you may witness to people, and you may witness to people, and you may witness to people, and it's like witnessing to a brick wall. You don't know if you're getting through. You don't know what is happening. You just don't know if anything's getting through. So you want to quit and give up. Don't give up. Because you know through the little cracks of the hard heart, that little seed gets in. And the seed of the gospel can break the heart to bring salvation to the soul. Because Christ is risen from the dead and we will be raised, our labor is not in vain. Paul had seen the risen Lord in the deserts of Arabia, of Arabia in Galatians chapter 1, verses 15 through 17. He spent three years. Not only did he see Christ in his salvation on the Damascus road, he spent three years in the desert learning from Christ. That's why he's an apostle. He had seen the risen Christ. Taught what the other apostles were taught by the risen Christ. And he also testified of this and he performed miracles in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And all that Paul did and suffered for Christ was profitable. It was not in vain that he was imprisoned and beaten and tortured and shipwrecked. That's a great recruiting poster. You know, suffer for the Lord, get in the ministry. But sometimes that's the ministry. And all Paul did was profitable. So we need to do what Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9 tells us to do. And be not weary in well-doing. For in due season ye shall reap if ye faint not. Don't give up. Be steadfast and unmovable and always abounding in the work of the Lord. Knowing that your labor is not in vain. That you're not wasting your time. You're not squandering your life. Serving the Lord. As believers in Christ, we may fail for the Lord. But the Lord will never fail us. The Lord remembers our labors for him, the Bible says, in the book of Hebrews chapter 6. In verse number 10. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse number 10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which ye have showed toward his name and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. Lord remembers the sacrifice you make to serve him. The Lord remembers the work and effort you put in to be able to make sure your family is saved, your friends are saved, your co-workers are saved, your neighbors are saved. And the witness you give to them 
In fact, upon that foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ, when we are obedient and when we're witnessing and when we're telling others of Christ, we are building on that foundation gold and silver and precious stones. what will be rewarded at the Bema Sea. It's not the fact whether the person gets saved or not. It's the fact that you were faithful enough to witness to them. You did your job. And maybe they don't come to know Christ as Savior. That's not your fault. It's theirs. You've done your part. And the Lord remembers that. The Lord remembers your faithfulness. And the one thing I know about faithfulness is that God rewards faithfulness. He always has. And He always will. So we'll continue to superabound for the Lord knowing that our reward will be great. The Lord will do for his children exceedingly abundantly more than they could ask or think. A believer's service in the Lord Jesus Christ nor their suffering can be compared to the glories awaiting us in heaven. That Paul writes in Romans chapter number 8. And verse number 18. Romans 8 and verse 18, the Bible tells us, Therefore I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Paul told his Son in the faith, Timothy, in 2 Timothy chapter... Oh, I forgot to write that down. Paul tells Timothy the same thing. There in the book of 2 Timothy. If believers in the Lord Jesus Christ serve and suffer for him now, the Bible says that we will see him, we will serve him, and we will reign with him. There in heaven. And if we die for his sake, then we'll be raised with him, crowned with glory, honor, immortality, and have eternal life. So, are you the steadfast, unmovable type? Are you rooted and grounded in the Lord Jesus Christ and his word? Do you serve the Lord abundantly? Then if not, if not, then you need to surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ who brings the victory in our lives. And nothing we do for him is vain. As we stand together for the invitation, have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay.